its properties. I'm pretty sure you guys have gone through the the notes and also the video on atomic structure up to chemical bonding. So I hope you guys have gone through all that. So um for today's class, like I've already stated, we are going to focus on water and its properties. So feel free to feel free to ask and also feel free to participate in today's class. Okay, so if you look at water, if you look at water, you need to understand that water is the most abundant liquid in the universe okay even if when you talk of this water when you talk of a human being when you talk of cells most of us or most of our body content is just simply made up of what of water including the planet earth it's all about what water so it's very important for us to understand what water is and we also need to understand some of the biochemical uh, function which this water plays a role. Okay, so we need to understand one thing. Um, one thing we need to understand is that there can be no life without water. There can be no life without water. So this is something that has to tell us that this liquid or this solvent is very important to us because you and I cannot survive without water. We cannot survive without water. Even the plants, they cannot survive without water. Including the insects, they cannot survive without water. So this is something that has to tell us that water is one of the most important content on earth which automatically it's very important for us to learn about it so water is important for two reasons water is important for two reasons one we need to understand that water is the major content of cells so the cells um, in the human being are made up of um, water which is between 70 to 95 percent so the content of water in the cell of a human being okay in the cell of a human being we need to understand that the content of water is between 70 percent to 95 percent so the range within this range that's where water um, average range is supposed to be found in every cell so this simply means that most of the chemical reactions in the human being they take place in the presence of what of water so most of the chemical reactions so you can talk about metabolic reactions which are classified into two we have catabolic and anabolic okay so we have two types of chemical reactions or two types of mechan uh, metabolic reactions so we have catabolic and anabolic reactions so all those reactions they surely take place in the presence of what of water so another thing that you need to understand is that this content between 70 to 95 percent is the amount of water which you need to expect in what in a cell but for a human being, you need to have an average of 60% of water. Sometimes in some books, they normally use 70%. So for some books, they'll say 60% and some books, they'll simply say 70%. So it's very important for you to take note. So this is the first reason why water is important. The other reason is that it provides an environment for those organisms that live in water. So if you look at organisms that live in water, you can simply look at a fish. Okay. So let's say a fish which is found in a very cold region. In a very cold region, how does it survive? So all that will be explained when we talk about the properties of water and how it's able to behave in the way 
its behaves. So, in summary of this part, we are just simply talking about two important two importances of water. One, it makes up um, 70 to 95 percent of the cell, and it also um, makes up 60 percent of a human being. For some books, it is 70 percent. Then. The other thing is that it provides an environment for organisms that live in water. So a very good example of an organism that live in water is just fish. Okay, with that in mind, we can simply move on and uh, we need to understand another point, which is three quarter of the planet is covered in water. So if you look at planet Earth, okay if you look at planet earth so if you look at planet earth most of its part is covered with water you can talk about the lakes you can talk about the oceans you can talk about the levers the dams all that is making up a three quarter of what of water in short we have a large amount of water on planet earth as compared to the land Okay. The next thing that we need to understand is that um, despite this water being a very simple molecule, this water has surprising properties. There is this part which I've stated that water has what surprising properties. Okay. So if you look at the size of water, just a single water molecule. It is very small in such a case that any molecule that is similar like water, it's normally a gas at room temperature. Most of the molecules that have the same or a little bit equivalent mass to water, they are a gas at room temperature. But when you talk about water, water is a liquid at room temperature. Water is a liquid at what? At room temperature. This is one of the things that makes water to be so unique. Another thing that you can look at water is its surface tension. I'm sure all of us have tried to understand how does a spider, how does an insect, floats on water how come uh, something that is small is capable of holding something that is big which is a spider or an insect all that will be appreciated when you look at these surprising water properties okay so uh, i think this point i've already explained it whereby i've said a molecule which is similar to water, a small molecule which is similar to water, is supposed to exist as a gas on what? On Earth at room temperature. Okay? But when you talk of water, it doesn't exist as a gas. Instead, it normally exists as a liquid. Why? Because of how it is made, its content, and also its behavior we we'll look at that when we go in detail so uh, this next point is still saying the same thing which i've already stated whereby i've said that water is normally a liquid at room temperature and this water it act as a medium for many molecules to dissolve in it it act as a medium for many molecules to dissolve in it. You can look at things like salt, which is sodium chloride. It's able to dissolve in this water. You can look at things like sugar, which is under carbohydrates. It's able to dissolve in this same one, in this same liquid. So this is very important to understand why because 
um, salt and glucose are capable of dissolving in this component which is water because of the properties which it just shows okay with that in mind um these properties of water okay these properties of water which we are calling the surprising properties or the special properties of water so these properties they depend on a very important bond which is known as the what the hydrogen bond so if you look at my picture here if you look at my animation this side you can see some green bones okay you can see some green bones so these green bones are what we are calling the what the hydrogen bonds now these hydrogen bonds are very strong such that it's very difficult for one to separate what two water molecules because these hydrogen bonds are very what are very strong as a result the physical properties of water most of them they depend on the hydrogen bonds you can talk about the heat of vaporization the high heat of vaporization it's because of the hydrogen bond which water has you can also talk about its um its tough surface tension which helps things like insects to float on it it's all because of this somewhat hydrogen bond why because these hydrogen bonds they are created between water molecules as you can observe the green ones they are between what water molecules and these hydrogen bonds are very hard to be what to be broken okay i hope that is clear so for example the energy which the energy which is needed to break the hydrogen bond makes it more difficult to convert what water to what to a liquid or from a liquid to a gas but this is somehow not the same when you compare things like what things like um, a bond which is shared between hydrogen and sulfur quite all right they have the same size but when you talk of the hydrogen the presence of the hydrogen bond between water molecules it's something that makes this water to be so hard to be what to be evaporated and to be changed to a liquid to a liquid from a solid or from a um from a liquid to a gas all that is hard because this water contains important bonds which are known as the what the hydrogen bond okay so if you look at this animation this animation is having some hydrogen bonds the green the green ones which are just the hydrogen bonds so these hydrogen bonds are the ones that make water to be so strong and so hard to be separated okay so another aspect of water which you guys are supposed to know is its ability to behave as a what has a solvent if you look at my picture here you can understand that there is a person who has put what salt or sugar in this water and this water has literally made the salt or sugar to dissolve so because this water is making these things like sugar which is a polar molecule like ions which is sodium chloride if you look at these things they are able to dissolve because of the properties of what of water as a result water is said to be the what the universal solvent so water is said to be the universal solvent why is it a universal solvent because most of the molecules are capable of dissolving in it the molecules are able to dissolve in it so the reason why these molecules okay 
these molecules and ions are able to dissolve in water is because of the presence of the what the hydrogen bonds so water act as an excellent solvent for what for ions and when you talk of ions we are simply talking about things like sodium chloride and then polar molecule you can talk about what glucose or carbohydrate so when you talk of a polar molecule a polar molecule is just a molecule which is what partially charged so these molecules are what are partially charged as a result water is soluble in water water is soluble in water it's able to dissolve itself through the what the hydrogen interactions that's why water is able to mix okay because of the what the hydrogen interactions even sodium chloride is able to to interact with water because of the partial charges which water has okay so from that information like when you talk of um, molecules which are polar you can pick uh, sugars you can also pick what uh, you can also pick glycerol which is just the, an alcohol so all these are capable of um, dissolving in water because these guys are known to be what polar molecules so polar molecules are capable of dissolving in water as a result these polar molecules are known to be what hydrophilic okay they are known to be what hydrophilic okay so the word hydrophilic it's just a word which is made up of two words hydro it is water philic it is loving so in short polar molecule are what water loving molecules water loving molecules examples of polar molecules you can talk about sugars such as glucose fructose and you can also talk about um you can also talk about maltose which is able to dissolve in what in, in water overall we are talking about carbohydrate but not all carbohydrates dissolve in what in water okay then this same water is capable of dissolving ions like i've stated sodium chloride it is an example of an ionic compound so because it is made up of ions it is able to to what to dissolve in water with this being said water is said to be a universal solvent okay so um one thing that you need to understand is that most of the chemical processes most of the processes that take place in human beings they are just taking place in form of what in form of a solution and this because of um, them taking place in form of solution these guys they need what they need water what we are just simply saying is that water is needed for any chemical reaction all the chemical reactions in the human being in the cells they take place in the presence of water because water makes 70 to 95 percent of the bulk of the mass of a cell and then when you talk of a human being it is just making up um, 60 to 70 percent so ladies and gentlemen is there any question before i move on is there any question before i move on florence do you have a question no i don't have a question so. ifeo do you have a question Ethel, do you have a question? Oh, I'm 
Josh, maybe we should swing it around. Um, Benzo, do you have any question? No, sir, clear. Okay. Puabona, any question? I'm good, sir. All right, okay. Let's move on. So, um, we are saying water is a what is a very good and a very important universal solvent but this water has some limits such that water cannot dissolve uh, non-polar molecules such as what lipids lipids cannot dissolve in what in water in short they are what insoluble so the reason why lipids are insoluble in water because these guys they are non-polar molecules molecules that do not dissolve in water are said to be what hydrophobic they are said to be hydrophobic so lipids are what hydrophobic if you look at here this downward here there is water but these are lipids same applies with cooking oil. When you put cooking oil in water, it will start floating down there. Okay? But um, apart from the fact that uh, the reason why it's floating is because of the low density, we also need to understand that the reason why it is not, the reason why it is, the reason why it is not dissolving in water, it's because it is hydrophobic okay someone was calling me i don't know who the person is but i'll pick up later so um lipids cannot dissolve in water because they are insoluble okay they are insoluble and the reason why they are insoluble is because they are non-polar molecules Non-polar molecules, like I have said, these are molecules that are hydrophobic. They fear water. Okay. So, when you talk of um, these same um, non-polar molecules, such as lipids, you need to understand that this is important, for example, in the word hydrophobic interaction. In it, things like proteins and also any membrane structures so when you talk of the cell membrane we'll simply go in detail on how these um these lipids because we need to understand that a cell membrane has two um lipid bilayers it has a two lipid bilayer so that simply means that we will be much interested on how water goes into the cell and outside the cell we'll talk about that more for now we are not going to discuss such okay so um because of the hydrogen bonds remember all most of the properties of water they depend on the hydrogen bond the presence of the hydrogen bond so because of the hydrogen bond water is what is tricky water is sticky okay that means that it's able to to interact it's able to interact to itself and to other molecules now i'm interested in some of the few things that you need to understand about water so water as a dipole moment okay water as a dipole moment because of the partial charges which it has that's the first point two because of the the arrangement of water water forms an angle which is 104.5 degrees the angle which is found in water is 104.5 degrees and the shape which water makes is known as the tetrahedron shape. So these are things that the examiner will be interested in 
when he asking questions. One, the bond angle, which is 104.5 degrees. In some books, they will say 104.5 degrees to 109. In some books, they will put that range. But for me, for my reference, I've just put 104.5. But for some books, you shall find between 104.5 to 109. That's the angle found in water. Okay? The other thing that you need to understand is the dipole moment. This dipole moment is because of the charge which is found in what in the water. The other one is the shape. So this is the shape of water. So this is the shape of water. You need to understand that water is not straight. I'm sure maybe at school you once drew a straight guy like that. So this straight one is wrong because the shape of water is in the water tetrahedron shape it exists like that and the angle here is just simply 104.5 so that's one of the important thing that you need to understand when you talk about water all right uh, before I look at hydrogen bonds, do we have any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Do we have any question? Um, loveness, do you have a question? Do you have any question? Okay, um, Frodens, any question? No question, sir. Okay, Frederick, any question? No, sir. How come Frederick today is female? You are two of you. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's move on, ladies and gentlemen, and look at the the other part which is the hydrogen bond. So if you look at this molecule which I've shown here. I'm going to make a very important point which you guys are supposed to know. So, if you look at this molecule here, okay? So, one thing you need to understand is that water, one water molecule, one water molecule, one water molecule, one water molecule can form about four hydrogen bonds. It can form about four hydrogen bonds with other water molecules. So this is the reason why if you look at this one is attached to that one, this one is attached to that one, that one is attached to that one, even this one will surely be attached to this one here. So there will be a bond there. So if you look at how many hydrogen bonds have been made, you need to look at the the first one which is this one you can also look at the other one you can also look at that one you can also look at that one so there are four hydrogen bonds that a single water molecule can form so these these are hydrogen bonds they are so strong in such a way that it's very hard for you to break them as a result water as those properties which we discuss now one thing that you need to understand that hydrogen bonds are formed when hydrogen atom covalent bond with nitrogen for example in proteins you can talk about oxygen you can talk about fluorine and these bonds which is um which is 
being created okay by the bond between hydrogen and these guys it is a what a polar covalent bond so a molecule which is having a polar covalent bond for example a, a, a molecule between a molecule which is formed between hydrogen and nitrogen and another molecule which is between oxygen and nitro and hydrogen these two are having a what a polar covalent bond as a result these guys are able to interact for example a covalent bond which is let's say a hydrogen fluoride gas hydrogen fluoride gas and the water these guys are having a what a polar covalent bond a polar covalent bond okay a polar covalent bond is a bond which is having partial charges like here you have a partially a negative charge and the partially positive charge why the electrons are not equally shared so molecules which are polar molecules which are polar they are capable of forming what hydrogen bonds between themselves okay so so in these molecules the hydrogen atom do not pull as strong as the shared electron as the nitrogen oxygen and the fluoride i think this was explained in the previous class so these molecules are these molecules for example hydrogen fluoride are water the ammonia these molecules are what are polar are polar molecules why because you need to understand that the hydrogen is partially positive and then the other atom is partially negative so when these molecules approach each other they are able to form what we are calling the hydrogen bond so ladies and gentlemen is there any question before i move on any question before i move on okay all right so um these hydrogen bonds are not true bonds okay these hydrogen bonds these hydrogen bonds are not what true bonds i think from um from the previous class i had to explain why the hydrogen bonds are said to be what to be bonds are not interactions so hydrogen bonds are not true bonds in short hydrogen bond are what hydrogen bond are just um, a form of interaction hydrogen bond are just a form of what interactions okay so with that in mind we need to understand that this hydrogen bond it exists between slightly positive uh, hydrogen ion with the other slightly negative uh, ion okay and then these guys these guys the the slightness is the one which is leading to the electrostatic force electrostatic force so the electrostatic force is the one which is causing the what the hydrogen bond to exist and this electrostatic force is existing between slightly positive molecules and the slightly negative molecules of which in this case the slightly positive is just an hydrogen but this molecule which is slightly negative the the ion which is slightly negative it is from another molecule it's not from the same molecule okay so now with this in mind we need to understand that the hydrogen bonds are weaker than the true ionic or covalent bond but they are strong enough as a result they are called to be they are said to be a hydrogen bond imagine look at this spider 
This spider is walking on water. This spider is walking on water. And if you look at this spider, this spider has a weight or mass which can make it to sink in water. But because the hydrogen bond which are being shared amongst the million of water molecules which are here, it is impossible for this guy to, to drown or for this guy to sink. Why? Because of the hydrogen bond which cannot easily be broken. Okay, so in the case of water, hydrogen bond form between neighboring hydrogen and oxygen of an adjacent water molecule. In short, the hydrogen bond it takes place between two different water molecules. Two different water molecules, H2O. I hope this is very clear because this is an exam question which everyone is supposed to know so the the hydrogen bond in case of water it exists between what it exists between two different water molecules okay now after we understand this hydrogen bond we need to understand something which is uh, when you talk of the properties of water. So, a molecule of water has two hydrogen atoms. A molecule of water has two hydrogen atoms. And these two hydrogen atoms are what are partially positive. Are partially positive. Okay, that's the first thing you need to understand. And then, both of these atoms are able to form a hydrogen bond with an oxygen atom of a different water molecule. Then, every water molecule can be hydrogen bonded with up to three here, this one, it has to be changed to a T4, okay? For some books, it will say 3, but the truth is that it has to be a T4. So take note of the, 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 the notes that you, you read. So one thing that you need to understand that for some literatures, they are going to say 3 water molecules, but the truth or according to the 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 lessons you are going to be having from here is that a water molecule one single water molecule can make up to four hydrogen bonds with other water molecules okay i think that is clear and i hope there are no questions do we have any questions before I move on and now look in detail on the properties of water. Mm, Loveness, do you have a question? Is Loveness in class? Anyway, you can move Taonga. Do you have a question? No, no, no. Owen, do you have a question? Owen? Oh, Owen, I don't know where he is. Uh, Chimuka? Oh, clear. Chimuka doesn't want to say anything. She has just sent a message. Clear. Okay, let's quickly look at the seven properties of water. So, one thing that we need to understand about water molecule is that one, water molecule has one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. So, one oxygen atom like that one, then 
two hydrogen atoms. Then the three atoms are held together by a polar covalent bond. I'm interested in that. So the bond between hydrogen and oxygen, it is a polar covalent bond. So electrons are not shared equally such that they are closer to what to oxygen they are closer to oxygen as a result oxygen is partially negative whereas hydrogen is partially what positive okay. then molecule has a bent structure so the water molecule has a bent structure like it's in that particular form it has a bent structure and this structure the shape is known as the what tetrahedron shape it has a tetrahedron shape and the angle between these two guys is just 104.5 degrees then there are seven properties of water that we are going to look at there are seven properties of water we are going to look at number one water is a polar molecule that's the first property water is a polar molecule so a polar molecule has a what a positive and the negative charge okay and then in a case of water you need to understand that oxygen is more electronegative as compared to what to hydrogen as a result oxygen is given a negative partial charge this is a negative partial charge that one a positive partial charge that one a positive partial charge so negative is normal the the water in the water has a negatively charged oxygen partially there is a word partial partial that's why he, these guys need to have what delta 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 that one delta that one delta that one delta 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 why because of the difference in electronegativity so the first property of water is that it is a polar molecule why because electrons are not equally shared as a result, oxygen is partially negative, while this hydrogen is partially positive. Okay, so this charge, okay, this charge make these water molecules, the charges make the water molecules to get attracted to other water molecules, such that a negative end it's normally attract the what the positive end of a different water molecule such that you can look at oxygen oxygen is getting attracted to hydrogen of a different water molecule that's one i need to emphasize on of a different water molecule not the same water molecule but a different water molecule so the hydrogen bond which is the hb the hydrogen bond it only exists between two different water molecules not the same water molecules okay all right so a hydrogen bond forms between the oxygen which is partially positive the oxygen which is partially positive and the hydrogen which is partially negative of what of different molecules i think this has been uh, understood now each hydrogen molecule can form hydrogen bond with up to what four neighbor water molecules four i'm emphasizing on four ladies and gentlemen four hydrogen bond so this one will have four, that 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 one will have four. And as a result, it's going to make what? A strong hydrogen bond. Very hard for it to be broken. Very hard for them to be what? To be broken. As a result, hydrogen bond, they determine the physical properties of water. 
such as the high surface tension, the, the capillarity, the, the, uh, the high heat of vaporization, the heat capacity, and also the density. All those have been determined because of how special water is and because of the hydrogen bond. Remember that one molecule of water can form can form four hydrogen bond with the neighboring water molecule. Okay, so the other property of water is its capillarity. So imagine how water is capable of moving from the roots to the leaves of a tree. So all that is because of the capillarity action. And this capillarity action is as a result of what? Of the cohesion and the adhesion. The capillary action, the capillary action of water is because of what? Of the cohesion and adhesion forces that exist. Cohesion, it is an interaction between same molecules and then when you talk of adhesion it's an interaction between different molecules between different molecules you can talk about uh, water and the, the surface of the glass that's adhesion water and the surface of the tube which is found in trees that's what that's uh, adhesion cohesion is within themselves so cohesion cohesion forces is just the sticking together of two like molecules or cell molecules so two water molecules are cohesive due to the water hydrogen bond two water molecules are cohesive due to the hydrogen bond okay the other one is adhesion which is sticking of two unlike molecules in short different water different molecules like the surface of the glass okay a water molecule being attracted to a sugar molecule so in this guy the sugar molecule you can pick you can talk about what glucose you can get glucose glucose is soluble in water and such an interaction is what is an adhesion interaction and this interaction is because of the hydrogen bonds so when you use the diagram this is how the the how the the cohesion and adhesion are stated so if you look at cohesion cohesion is between same uh, molecules what is adhesion is between different molecules so one of the ways in which the capillary reaction of water is um, applicable is the movement of water from the roots up to the water, up to the leaves. Remember, the capillary reaction is due to the water, the cohesion and the adhesion forces. So, the question is, how does water get to the top of plants? And the answer is the, the same thing which I have stated. It's because of the capillary action and this capillary action is due to the what cohesion and adhesion forces okay so cohesion among a water molecule cause them to pull one another upward against gravity and also adhesion contribute to as water adheres to the walls of the vessel so it can travel upward and these two are leading to what we are calling the what the capillary action so the capillary action which is just uh, helping in terms of movement of water in a tree okay so ladies and gentlemen is there any question before i move on um Taonga, do you have any question Philip, do you have any question before we move on? Philip?
Philip. Okay. I think Philip. Um, who is this? Gemini. Gemini. Ah, this name I failed to pronounce it. Gemini. Do you have any question? <laughs> no, I don't. Okay. <laughs> we move. So, um, look at the spider. If you look at this spider, the spider is floating on water. The spider is floating on water. So, if you look at the floating properties of water, if you look, sorry, if you look at the floating properties of this spider, it depends on the properties of water so the property of water which helps a spider to float on water it is known as the water the surface tension so due to the hydrogen bond water has the high surface tension so the surface tension is a measure of the force necessary to stretch or break the surface of a liquid but for water, it has a high surface tension such that it's very hard for anything to break it unless that thing is even that much strong or that much heavy. Because this insect is heavy, but it's still floating. Even a pin is able to float. So all this, it's because of the hydrogen bond which exists between what water molecule so the hydrogen bond it is it the hydrogen bond which are created between water molecule are so strong in such a way that it's very hard for them to be broken okay so this normally allows insects to walk on water even your pin your pin is able to to float on water why because of the surface tension but this hydrogen bond can be broken when they are broken and you discover that uh, something can sink in it and you can just easily use the detergent like soap uh, those detergents you use those those can easily break the hydrogen bond okay like in this particular part you can see the you can see the the pin which is floating the pin is simply floating on water all this is because the hydrogen bond and the surface tension which exists in water okay uh, i don't know if there is any question um, any question on the surface tension Any question? Are you guys able to see my screen? Because people have been calling me and just disturbed my network. Probona, can you see my screen? Are you guys able to get me or not? Okay, so um, the network had to log me out. So I'll quickly look at the other properties of water, which is the the fourth one is just the heat capacity so when you talk of the specific heat capacity this is just the amount of heat that must be absorbed or lost before it actually changes the the temperature so you need to understand that water has a high heat capacity water has a high heat capacity such that water can absorb or release large amount of heat with only a slight change in its own temperature so this is one of the reason why some um, organisms such as fish they are able to survive in very cold region because 
of this particular property of water which is the high specific heat such that it takes a lot of energy for it to absorb and for it to um it's for it to to change the the, the temperature of itself okay so this is one of the reason why water takes a long time for it to just boil then water has the high heat of vaporization so this is the cooling of a surface on um, this is the cooling of a surface occur when the liquid evaporates and when you talk of water water normally has a high heat of vaporization okay so for example in a case when you sweat there is that cooling effect that you feel so that cooling effect that you normally feel is just as a result of the what the heat of vaporization so the other property of water which is unique to it is the density so one thing you need to understand that density is a measure of of how compact the atom or molecule are within a substance or how much mass there is in a given space then water compared to other liquids okay when you compare water um water to other liquid you need to understand that water is not very dense and then water is more dense as a liquid than as a solid that's why you see normally ice uh, ice floating in a liquid so that's just what we are talking about all that is just because of the hydrogen bond so because of the hydrogen bond you need to understand that um when the when the hydrogen bond in a solid like ice you need to understand that the hydrogen bonds are stable and as a result they they reduce the volume okay but when you talk of the of the of the liquid so in a liquid you need to understand that the these hydrogen bonds are constantly breaking and reforming so when water freezes and become ice the polarity causes hydrogen bond to form but there is air in between them this causes the expansion and as a result ice floats in water so when the expansion takes place that means that there is an increase in in what increase in e volume so since there is an increase in volume then you need to expect what low density so you need to expect low density okay so if this didn't happen all the iceberg could sink water level would rise so this is just a, a statement which is trying to explain to us if at all ice was uh, denser than water okay so the other uh, property of water that you need to understand is that water is a universal solvent this simply means that um most of the compound or most of the molecules they normally dissolve in water so if you look at the solvent a solvent is a liquid that dissolves a particle and this particle is known as the water the solute so there are a lot of solutes there are a lot of liquids gases and also solids which normally dissolve in water as a result water is normally uh, water is normally the universal solvent so a solute which is just a particle liquid that gets dissolved in the solvent so a solvent is a liquid then a solute can be anything so long it's dissolved in this solvent in a case of water and salt in such a case you need to understand that um, salt is a solute and water is a solvent and then water is a solvent that dissolves most uh, solutes so even if you get uh, sodium chloride so when you get sodium chloride you're going to understand that there will be dissociation within these guys and they are going to turn into what into ions such that this uh, sodium will be interacting with the oxygen in water will be interacting with the oxygen in water and then the 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 chloride will be interacting with the 
hydrogen in water so that's why these guys are able to dissolve in water not because of the the hydrogen bonds but because of the dissociation that simply take place so if the solute molecules are polar like in a case of uh, sugar these guys they normally um, form the what the hydrogen bond so there is a formation of the hydrogen bond and as a result the polar molecules are able to dissolve in what in water so in such a case you need to understand that the positive ends of water which is the hydrogen end who gets attracted to the negative end of the solute like if you look at this mixture here so let's say this is the sugar crystal so this sugar crystal will dissolve in this water and then the negative end will interact with the positive end of that molecule and the positive end of this molecule interact with the negative end of water when you talk of ions, so negative ions will interact with the oxygen and uh, the positive ions, sorry, will start interacting with 